So now that we have been introduced to the idea of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we're ready to make some fun connections to eigenvalues and invertible matrices. Now, for now, we're going to be making these fun connections to just two by two matrices. But later on, we're going to be able to extend these ideas to n by n matrices. So to begin, let's recall what we know about two by two matrices. So let's suppose that we have a Q two by two matrix A with the components A, B, C, D. Now, we also know that the determinant of such a matrix A is defined as A times D minus B times C. Now, with this information, there's two cases that we need to consider. The first case, if the determinant of A does not equal zero, then we conclude that matrix A is invertible or non-singular. So what is this telling us? Well, this is telling us that the matrix equation, matrix A times vector X is equal to zero vector, has one unique solution. A trivial solution, if you will. Now, with eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we are concerned with the non-trivial solution case. Which brings us to case number two. If the determinant of matrix A is equal to zero, then we can conclude that matrix A is non-invertible or singular. So if a matrix A is non-invertible, this is telling us that A has a non-trivial null space. which is exactly what we are looking for. So with this second case here, we are officially ready to make or to relate the ideas of invertible matrices to eigenvalues. So we can say that for a two by two matrix A, lambda is an eigenvalue of matrix A when the determinant of matrix A minus lambda times the identity matrix is equal to zero. So again, we're just thinking about this in relationship to two by two matrices, so we can even add a sub two to our identity. But as we progress through our explorations of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we'll see that this same idea holds true for n by n matrices as well.